Welcome. What I want to do today is show you how to uh, factor this expression. So the main thing we're looking at when we're looking into factoring is we want to see what the greatest common factor is. What is it all three of these terms are going to share in common? So when we look at this, we obviously know that they share numbers in common. And what we want to do is, out of those numbers, what is the largest number that divides into all of them? What is the largest number that, um, that easily goes into each of them? So when we look at that, a simple way to start with is obviously look at the smallest number, right? Because if I look at, uh, if I look at all these numbers, I know that 2, since these are all even numbers, I know 2 evenly divides into all these. But what is going to be the largest number out of 32, 8, and 80 that goes into all of them? Well, obviously it cannot be a number that's larger than 8 because no number larger than 8 evenly divides into 8, right? 8 is the largest number that divides into 8. So I look at, does 8 divide into 32? Yes, it does. And does 8 divide into a negative 80? And you say, yes, it does. So what I can do is 8 is going to be what I call my greatest common factor. And what we're going to do is we're going to factor that out. Pretty much what that means is we're going to divide our 8 out of our three terms. So what I'll do is I'll write this 8 out here. And when I divide it out, so 32 divided by 8 is going to give me a 4. 8 divide out an 8 is just going to leave me with a 1, which I'll write in here just so you guys can see it. And then a negative 80 when I factor out an 8 is going to leave me with a negative 10. Now the next thing we need to do is look at our variables and determine is there a variable that we can factor out as well that they all share. And remember we have to use our rules of exponents when we're factoring out of variables because remember the rules of exponents state, you know, if you're adding, I'm sorry, if you're multiplying exponents, you add them up. And if we're going to divide out, then we're going to subtract the exponents. So here I look at what is the lar what variable do they all share? Well, here has a v to the sixth. Here I have a v and a u. And here has a v squared. Well, since they all share a v, I know I can factor out a v. This is the only term that has a u, so I cannot factor a u out of the other two terms. So I'm going to look at a v, a v and I need to determine what is the largest term of v that I can factor out. And again, we're going to look at to what is the smallest exponent. Well, what I notice is v is just also v to the first. So that's going to be the smallest number I can factor out um, out of these terms. So what I can do is if I factor out a v to the first power, what I'll have is v to the sixth divided by v to the first. And like I said, we're using our rules of exponents. So what I'm really doing is dividing v to the sixth divided by v to the first is equal to v to the 6 minus 1, which equals v to the 5th. Okay? So when I factor out a v to the 1st, I'm left with a 4 v to the 5th. If I factor out my v to the 1st, that's the only v I have here. So I'm just going to be left with um, a 1, 1 times u. And then here, if I factor out a v to the 1st from a v squared, I'm going to be left with another v to the 1st power. Then what I'll do is I'll just kind of reduce this. We usually don't write our 1 in front of a variable, nor to really write a 1 in front of an x, or a 1 as our exponent, because you know v to the first power we know just equals v. So let's just write this in a more simplified version. So I'll have 8v times 4 v to the fifth plus u minus 10v. I look at my answer, I look at my answer, I notice I cannot combine any of those like terms, and that is simply factored. Thanks.